June 23, 2021. Mama County 911. There's a dead body out here. He's just trying to get on the road. Could you tell whether it was a black male or a white male? It's a black man. He got on all gray. I passed him coming from Macau. I was scared to turn around because I don't know what's going on. I'm out here in the woods. I'm scared for my life. We're uh, on the way to a site on Pea Bridge Road where we worked a homicide back in June of uh, this year, 2021. A man was shot multiple times and left in the middle of the road where he later died. It was uh, early in the morning, uh, midnight, 1 a.m., where the scene is roped off right at the North Carolina line. And uh, I immediately see somebody I recognize as a guy from a call named Patches uh, just laying in the middle of the roadway in a puddle of his own blood. Marlboro County Sheriff's Lieutenant Trevor Murphy says Ronald Thomas's murder was an execution. And um, at that point I realized that uh, this was no hit and run and this was no self-inflicted wound that this, this man was murdered. It didn't take Murphy and his men long to develop leads from people who watched as Patches was gunned down in the middle of Pea Bridge Road. We, uh, we caught a break, uh, had two witnesses, eyewitnesses come forward and they both gave a statement on um, what happened that night. And, and what they saw with their own eyes. And they both implicated um, a killer. Um, somebody they knew, somebody they recognized, and somebody they observed um, take the life and kill Patches. Murphy says he video recorded the witness statements, then tracked down the suspect and interviewed him. The man told investigators he had nothing to do with the murder and had an alibi. And he was with three other people nowhere near the crime scene and none of them could confirm his alibi. They all denied being with him that night and um, said that he was not with them, which completely ruined the story he gave us. At this point, with two eyewitnesses, we, we were able to establish some motive due to past incidents between the victim and the alleged offender. We have an offender who's given us an alibi that we have completely blown through and discredited. And at this point, it was time to use a solicitor and seek charges out against the shooter. The investigators brought the um, evidence before our solicitor who reviewed everything and confirmed that we had enough to move forward with charges, um, at which point an affidavit was drawn up for murder and uh, presented to Stood in the way, Marlboro County Sheriff Charles Lemon. But unfortunately, once we let Sheriff Lemon know about the evidence we gathered in our approval for warrants, we were put on hold and told to wait because he had another person of interest he wanted to look into first. And that was in late July? That was in uh, late, mid, mid to late July. Yeah. Central 305, I'll be 10-8. Murphy says he never got the go-ahead from the sheriff, but never stopped working to make an arrest. I log that 77 check, the greasy corner in McCall. We were on patrol with Murphy in December when he spotted Patches' widow, who's also waiting for justice for her husband's murder. Hey, girl. How are you doing? Yeah, you doing all right? Yeah. How you holding up? I'm making it. You need anything? No, I'm good. We um we're still working. I know. We're still working on it. Um, I know they were telling me about it. Okay. We're still on it, so um you heard anything new or no. No, no thing. We're still on it. We're gonna we're gonna make something happen. I know y'all are. So I appreciate Let it. Let know if anything. All right. Thanks, buddy. All right, bye. Murphy says he couldn't tell her the whole story. The story of how he says his boss, the elected sheriff, was the only thing standing in the way of a murder warrant. Absolutely. If the sheriff had not interfered, if he would just allowed us to do our job and present the probable cause that was established and seek out that warrant, then a person who was seen by two people to take a life would be in jail right now. We found Sheriff Charles Lemon in December as he emptied his patrol truck just hours after the governor suspended him from office. How about the Pea Bridge homicide? Your investigators tell us that you told them to hold off on securing murder warrants on that case in July. And here it is, December, and that case is still unsolved. Lemon remained silent as he and a pair of sled agents moved him out of office. Murphy told us this wasn't the only time the sheriff stood in the way of the major crimes unit and their pursuit of justice. The sheriff likely didn't know at the time a group of law enforcers spent two years compiling a case on him, detailed in a 76-page document titled Lemon Laws. 
Murphy delivered the file to SLED in November, the same day he gave it to us. About a week ago, you sent this, Lemon Laws. Lemon Laws. You also gave this to SLED. I did, and I felt more comfortable giving it to you than SLED. I believe in SLED. I believe that Chief Kill has a great agency um, that's very capable. But again, the sheriff claims to have so much power and reach, and there's no way of knowing how far that power actually reaches. Or who to trust. Or who to trust. Um, who you can trust in law enforcement, outside of law enforcement. But after going through those incidents that we tried to get out in the past and tried to go through like backdoor ways, secret phone numbers, you know, you know, manufactured emails, trying to get this information out to law enforcement and the media and nothing ever be done with it, um, I realized that being anonymous isn't gonna work anymore. The fear was being blackballed from law enforcement. South Carolina sheriffs have the power to fire a deputy for no reason at all. Since South Carolina law enforcers hold certifications to carry a gun and badge, a misconduct claim against a certification would put a license to police in jeopardy. It could take months or more than a year for a law enforcer to clear his name with the state if he can ever clear it at all. I just got a call yesterday that he went to SLED himself and attempted to slander me, but thankfully I'd already given SLED that packet and they knew what he was trying to do and that he was trying to throw something on me that he has done. And I am absolutely terrified of doing this. I, this is heartbreaking. I'm, I cried in the truck this morning when I turned my notice in. I mean, this is, um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna cry now, but um, this is heartbreaking, this is terrifying. This is a situation I've never been in. I'm being forced to walk away from my dream and it is heartbreaking. People don't understand that, again, with a simple stroke of the pen, he can put something on my separation letter that he sends to the academy that keeps me from doing this job you know, ever again that he could call other agency heads and lie on me off the record to keep anybody else from ever hiring me. The day we shot this interview with Trevor Murphy in November, he resigned, but he did not leave the sheriff's office right away. He agreed to stay on another month and continued working with SLED as agents investigated Murphy's claims against the sheriff. There have been people that have lost their rights, that have lost their freedom, that have had their civil rights violated, just mere safety violated because of how he is and, and how he's acted and that's what that packet is is it's incidents where he's violated people's rights where he's he's extended the scope of what he's supposed to do uh, freely and voluntarily to do what he wants to do and not what the law says to do for example deputies executed a search warrant at a home in this housing authority after a woman in a traffic stop said her boyfriend boyfriend had drugs and money stashed here Investigators determined the drugs did not belong to the woman. Deputies say the woman, then 20-year-old Deja Harrison, was more than cooperative, but the trouble started when the sheriff showed up during the search warrant. Deputies wrote the sheriff chastised Harrison about drug dealing in Marlboro County and young black boys that won't work. Harrison told us she rolled her eyes at the sheriff, who threatened to lock her up if she rolled her eyes at him again, and she did. The report says the sheriff grabbed her, cuffed her, and had another deputy charge her with public disorderly conduct. Except Harrison was not in public. She was released from jail an hour later, and the charge was eventually dropped. It was an arrest investigators told us the sheriff had no lawful authority to make. Investigators say the sheriff abused his authority again when a house on Pringle Drive was broken into and someone stole around $100 in change. Investigators wrote in the report the homeowner named two men labeled persons of interest in the police report. Investigators say the sheriff ordered another deputy to sign first-degree burglary warrants on Curtis Jackson and Monty Jacobs, two men who lived around the corner. The charge carries a potential life sentence. The sheriff ordered the arrests, but had no probable cause to do so, according to Lieutenant Trevor Murphy, who gave SLED agents texts from the arresting deputy that he says proves it. The charges against both men were later dismissed. How about the Pringle Drive with Jerome Jacobs, Curtis Jackson? Any of these cases at all we could talk to you about? Lemon wouldn't talk about those cases either.
we left Sheriff Charles Lemon an open invitation to participate in our lost trust investigation, but he never took us up on it. We're working on several other investigations concerning allegations of your conduct in offices. You have a way I can reach you so we can run those by you? I don't want to report that without you having to say, man. The packet detailed other cases where deputies say the sheriff covered up crimes his unit investigated, like the case of a former Marlboro County deputy accused of stealing pay from an off-duty security detail at this public housing complex. The report also accused the sheriff of covering up a prostitution investigation at this Bennettsville fire station involving an on-duty fireman. Murphy says he gave the case file to the sheriff, who told him he knew the fireman and the fireman was a good fella and to sit on it until the sheriff decided what to do with it. We filed a Freedom of Information Act request with the new Marlboro County Sheriff to see the case files for the off-duty security work and the fireman investigation. I went through a law track. I cannot find any answer reports you're looking for or asked about or inquired about. Chief Deputy Larry Turner says he searched every database in the Sheriff's Office for the case files the investigators say they turned over to Sheriff Charles Lemon. But those records no longer exist. Why would they not be here? That I can't answer. I have no clue. This file over a couple months ago, and we're kind of just sitting on go. Murphy says the last thing he wanted to do was to risk his law enforcement career by going on camera and going public. But he says he had no other way to get this out. There's a thing in law enforcement, this uh, blue wall of silence, where you don't tell on cops, you know, don't do this, don't do that. But um, to me, that's nonsense. I don't believe in that. Report it. If nobody listens at the sheriff's office, go to SLED. If nobody listens at SLED, go to the FBI. If nobody listens at the FBI, go to Jody Parr. So find somebody that will listen, and, and once they do, um, you know, let the Lord handle the risk. On December 9th, two hours after his final interview with SLED, Lieutenant Trevor Murphy ended his career with Marlboro County. Murphy waved his key card outside the secured sheriff's office door and walked in to hand over his gun and badge. After a few minutes saying goodbye. Is that it, man? Yeah. Trevor Murphy left the Marlboro County Sheriff's Office for the last time. Now, one month later, Trevor Murphy says interim Marlboro County Sheriff Larry McNeil has not offered him his job back. SLED tells me the investigation into the allegations against the County Sheriff Charles Lemon is ongoing, and so is the state's prosecution of the sheriff and the former deputy over that body camera video.